There we go. So a big warm welcome to everybody. I am Sean Hudson Bennett, although it probably doesn't say so there at the bottom. That belongs. That name belongs to my wife Heidi, who are very grateful for many things. One of which is that she has special Google abilities. And that's why I'm using her account right now, so I can record and do more things than most people can. Um, but welcome, everybody, to the very first topic that we have with our new theme uh, within Wasaku. And we are um, covering a very valuable theme, being universal values of mathematics. And we will explore specific little topics um, and thaw them through and discuss and really hopefully come up with some valuable uh, insights and uh, sharing of ideas. Topic number one we're starting with today is self-awareness, self-assessment and mathematics. And we'll be starting with a presentation which will stir up the pot in our heads, help us start to initiate the discussion and with ideas. We can see some valuable questions on our screens there as well, which will make you start to think. And then, let me just admit someone extra there. And then the Wasaku team will use this discussion to help conceptualize and put together a column that will con be contributed towards the, the next Wasaku magazine. So for anybody who wishes to participate in the conversation now in real time, we would we assume that you give us permission to include your comment or a quote that you have, um, which we which is put towards any article or publication. But we would love you to please um, everyone who's here, whether you would like, we, whether you're happy to grant that permission, or whether you uh, you would not like to be included. There's a Google form. If someone could, um, we'll put that up in the chat very soon. There it is. Thank you from Sophie. Um, if everyone could just please contribute, just fill that up perhaps later or when it suits you and we'll get a better idea of um, the contributions that are going for, forward. This form is also for anyone who'd like to contribute, but maybe um, not want to do it live. You can add to that form. And even if you want to raise points that are off the topic um, and perhaps something that can be explored at a later stage, that Google form is there for you to use. So I'd like to introduce our speaker um, who will be presenting to us soon. Her name is Leslie Scott. She's completed her psychology master's thesis at Stellenbosch University with researching intersecting the disciplines of psychology and mathematics. This thesis has been supervised by Mariam Sully and Sophie Marquez. And the topic is perceptions and lived experience, exploring factors that, that affect the student retention in mathematics. So Leslie's experience, in her experience, mathematics is not only an art in itself, it lies at the heart of many creative and human pursuits. While mathematics is too often seen as an isolated discipline, she believes that it is diversity and collaboration that allows for innovation and advancement within the field and beyond. When not studying or researching, Leslie is a contributing author and a content creator for a number of online platforms. And she has authored a series of books that help young children recognize and regulate their emotions. Additionally, she facilitates lessons for children identified at high risk for learning, for early learning failure. And Leslie believes in the power of community and that connecting with others helps us to make sense of the world. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what Leslie has to bring to us this, this afternoon. And uh, a very warm welcome to everyone once again. Over to you, Leslie. Thank you very much, Sean, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm sharing my screen, so I can't see you all. Um, but Sean, if I can just ask if you see that I'm starting to go over time, if you wouldn't mind just giving me a little bit of a, a heads up. I'm just um, going to take this slide yes. off so that I can go onto my um, 
just to interrupt you briefly, I hear your, your <laughs> microphone is, is raising some static again. Again. Uh, it was working well when you left briefly and came back. Mm. Can, we, can I suggest we try that again? We can try that again, absolutely. Okay. Let me that leave works. and then join right. again. Thank you. Okay. Let's all behave ourselves while Leslie sneaks off quietly. <laughs> The anticipation. It's like digital musical chairs. <laughs> yes. If one team seems to shuffle around. There's Leslie back. And her microphone is off now, so she, there's no static. Now it's on. Okay. How is this? Perfect. Okay, so I do apologize. There seems to be a bit of a static issue. Um, Sean will let me know if it appears, in which case I might disappear and re reappear again. Um, I've got a presentation. Sean will make sure that I stay on track. And um, at the end of it, yeah, I'd, I'd really encourage you to join in the discussion with us. We've already had a discussion um, that informed the basis of this presentation today. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes with everybody else and your thoughts and opinions. So before I start, um, can everybody see my screen? Yep, you're okay. sharing. Okay, great. Okay, so hello everybody and <laughs> welcome to our first presentation on the universal value of mathematics. And um, sorry, I'm just, trying to suddenly everything's misbehaving here so i'm just trying to get the slideshow to play for me um slideshow there we go so my discussion today is about mathematics self-assessment and self-awareness and how these three um, factors are connected and affect one another um, I start the presentation with a quote from my master's thesis um, written by Ziegler, who said, the world of mathematics is our world. Mathematics is not at all something distant, strange and abstract that one can only learn about and learn to hate in school. And I think this is quite significant because of the fact that mathematics is so polarizing for so many people they develop a love, hate or hate, hate relationship with maths right at the beginning of their education. And it is very difficult once that perception of the subject becomes ingrained and entrenched in their way of thinking for them to change and see mathematics through a different lens. But what is mathematics? When I was studying and looking for a definition of mathematics, I had warnings from a number of mathematicians to be careful as to how I defined mathematics, because depending on who you were speaking to, the definitions were so different. But one thing that struck me when I was looking for my definitions was finding out that even at the foundation phase level in South Africa, mathematics is described as something not abstract, something real. And it's quite a lot of words on the slide, but if I read it to you, they describe maths as a language that makes use of symbols and notations for describing numerical, geometric, and graphical relationships. And then it is a human activity involving observing, representing, and investigating patterns and qualitative relationships in physical and social phenomena and between mathematical objects themselves. It helps develop mental processes that enhance logical and critical thinking, accuracy and problem solving that will contribute to decision making. And I found that that was quite eye opening for me that already at the foundation phase level, grades one to three, mathematics in writing from the Department of Education is seen as something beyond the numbers. But yet the way mathematics is presented and dealt with in many classrooms um, is not in this way, not in this way that is interactive and integrated. It is rather something that seems set apart from 
real life and real life application. And I started looking into why this is and what is the universal value of mathematics beyond the classroom? Is mathematics relevant beyond academia? And yes, it is. There are many things, hundreds of that are not listed here, um, that give mathematics value apart from just being able to find solutions. Mathematics develops logic and rationality. It provides opportunities for self-assessment. It encourages critical thinking skills. It's a problem-solving tool. And it is also a tool through which personal growth can happen, whether that is in respect of the ability to manage your time, to be disciplined, to pursue something that you don't necessarily enjoy or understand, and to have that curiosity of wanting to know more and find out more about things that maybe are not concrete, things that are abstract and that you have to push the envelope of your mind and expand to beyond what is obvious, to look for those things that are not obvious. And beyond that, mathematics is a place where self-consciousness in terms of people's belief in themselves and their abilities in mathematics can be converted into a place of self-assessment where rather than judgments of I can do maths, I can't do maths, I'm good at maths, I'm a failure, um, I'm great at maths, therefore I must identify in a certain way or I'm awful at maths and therefore that affects my self-value can be converted into a place of assessing myself and saying, where am I in this space? What is it that makes me able to do this, unable to do this? How can I do this better? How do I think I'm going to do? And if I don't do as well or as badly as I thought I was going to do, why is that? What are those factors? So when it comes to being able to assess yourself, and why it's important in mathematics, self-awareness can be um, said to be an act of knowing oneself in a way that is non-judgmental. So to take an honest look at your life or at a particular situation without an attachment to that awareness of being right or wrong. So being able to neutrally acknowledge yourself and identify your strengths and your weaknesses when you are self-aware, when you know yourself, you can more accurately evaluate or assess yourself, your behaviors. You can regulate your emotions because you are aware of them and you can acknowledge them. You know how to manage them. You know how to manage other behaviors that are required to get things done. Whether that is knowing that you are not good at time management, um, you have the self-awareness of that, and yet you know that you need to develop self-discipline so that you can do that better. Self-assessment, on the other hand, is an ongoing process whereby you are thinking about yourself and your progress in a way where you are asking yourself critical questions so that you can improve your own processes of learning and knowing. So you start with the question, where am I now? What are the shortfalls in my knowledge? What is it that I understand? What is it that I do not understand? Self-reflection, what are the aspects of me that make me unable to do whatever the thing is, in this case, mathematics? And how am you to be able to unemotionally compare yourself to other people? How are others doing and how am I doing in comparison? And then being able to say, how do I close the gap? How do I improve? How do I better myself? If I'm already ahead of my peers, how do I compete with myself to make myself even better without competition? How am I going to develop myself and my skills, not just in mathematics, but in the um, adjacent skills that I need to be able to do this thing? And then also to have a goal, where am I headed? What is the place that I want to be at um, 
within whatever field it is or whatever place in life you're at. So it's not just a skill that you can apply to mathematics. It's a skill that you can apply anywhere in life. Where am I with this now? What do I want to be? And what do I need to do in order to get there? And this is very important because as individuals, we create our own reality. And our reality is subjective and it is based on how we perceive the world to be. So if we have an underlying voice in our mind that is telling us that we're incapable of doing something, that something is difficult, that we can't do it, that we're never going to be able to do it, um, unless if we can change our own perspectives, it doesn't matter what other people tell us, we will continue to see the world through that lens. And by looking at the world through our own perspective, although that reality is ours and it is true to us, it can result in an inaccurate assessment. And we may inadvertently interpret a situation in a way that does not reflect an objective reality. So to use an example from mathematics, it would be to believe that I have studied really hard for a test I know everything that there is to know about it, and I'm going to get 90% for that test. And when your result comes back, it's not. It might be a 50 or an 80 or even an 89, but it wasn't the 90% that you thought you were going to get. And then it's important to be able to have some self-introspection and to be able to reflect honestly on why is your perspective that way? Why do you believe that you were going to do that? And why didn't you? What was the problem? Was it that you over-evaluated your own abilities? Was it the fact that you maybe didn't put in as much time as you thought you had? Did you underestimate the difficulty of the work that you were doing? And I think that is true in many subjects, um, not just academically, but in life where what we believe about something um, can often be distorted by how we perceive ourselves. And when it comes to mathematics, self-awareness and self-assessment, where do they intersect? So mathematics as a subject has rules and structure. And yes, there might be people that will disagree with those rules or those structures, believe that maybe things are wrong, um, but until they can prove them otherwise, or until someone else proves them otherwise, those rules and structure are taken as accepted. Mathematics is less subjective, and generally you are working towards an answer. There may be many different ways of getting to that answer, but yet the answer will still be the same regardless of how you got there. And mathematics provides finite par parameters for self-assessment. Unlike a creative um, pursuit such as writing, where someone else will have a different viewpoint on whether what you have created is pleasing or not, in mathematics, something either is or it isn't, mostly. And so because of that, you should be able to know what you need to do, how you need to do it to be able to achieve the results that you want. And if you are able to do that, if you have the self-awareness of knowing who you are, what your shortcomings are, what you need to work on, and if you are able to accurately self-assess, neutrally judge your own ability and performance, when you put those things together and apply them to the way in which you learn, um, in which you measure your progress, in which you measure your performance, you should be able to do that in a way that is true. And yet, it is not always easy to analyze yourself within the parameters of the subject. And it is very possible that you can conflate being good or bad at mathematics with being a success or a failure in general, which is not the case. And it does happen often that we see ourselves as bad at something and we internalize that feeling of badness or failure as being an intrinsic part of who we are. 
And that's why it's important to be able to separate those two aspects of good and bad, success and failure as an extrinsic thing, as opposed to an intrinsic part of ourselves. It also is difficult because being able to accurately self-assess um, does affect your self-awareness. Um, the, the more accurately you can assess how you're going to do, the better you learn to know yourself and the better you learn to judge where it is that you need to make changes in order to do better. But at the same time as that, can you self-assess and make an informed assessment if you are unaware of missing foundational knowledge? And that is an external um, locus and an external factor that we are not always aware of when we are busy assessing ourselves, especially in a subject like mathematics. How is mathematics helpful to the processes of self-awareness and self-assessment? Mathematics is a subject that is assessed regularly. And so you have regular opportunities to assess and reflect both on your performance and on your progress adjacent to that performance. So if you start a year off and you are putting half an hour a week into the subject and you're failing, but over the year you're reflecting on the fact that that's not good enough and so you are making um, thoughtful changes to grow, that is part of the process of self-awareness. And as you identify areas for personal growth, you can then work on those and they can be applied throughout your life, not just within the field of mathematics. And when you identify weaknesses or aspects of yourself that inhibit or encourage your improvement, you can learn how to manage those. You can know that what you are doing is either a self defeating behavior or a self promoting behavior. Sorry, and Liz. as Yes. You asked me to just monitor your time, just okay. to say that we've, we've been going for about 15 minutes, but okay. I love got, what you're here. Uh, <laughs> I've got about two minutes left, so I'll brilliant. speed it up a bit. No, so, no, <laughs> just to give you an idea. Okay, thank you. So mathematics is helpful because you can question how your success is measured, either in your performance or your understanding of the subject. Have you mastered the subject? and your understanding of yourself. What aspects of myself are growing, changing and developing as I'm going through this process? And when we look at the application of how we can incorporate self-awareness and self-assessment into, if you are a teacher or a lecturer of mathematics, how can you make the universal aspect of mathematics explicit? You know, a lot of, I'm not a mathematician and the little meme on the right hand side of the screen is very much me, you know, I'm waiting for the day that I'm using some formula in, in real life. It's not relevant, but yet mathematics clearly outlines the topic and skills to be mastered. And if an educator is doing that and advising the learners and students of other competencies that they are gonna gain while they are working through a topic, it is a way of making mathematics universally explicit. Um, teachers should be discussing why is this relevant? What, what usefulness will either having the knowledge or the skills that I'm learning in this process relevant for me? Um, we can focus on the value of knowledge, not only the achievement and outcomes, and we can learn how to separate the performance of students and others from themselves as an individual. We can remember to affirm the individual even if their performance is less than ideal. We can introduce practices in the learning space that scaffold and develop competencies outside of mathematics. And we can destigmatize and break mathematical stereotypes, both from the um, perspective of if I'm bad at maths, I'm a failure, as well as the stereotype that someone that is good at maths is a particular type of person. And lastly, especially as um, young people 
um, get into high school and further on into universities and other forms of tertiary education is ongoing education about mathematics focused career paths. What can you be other than a teacher or a lecturer if you persevere with mathematics? So the goal for people who are in the field of mathematics in whatever aspect should be to move themselves and the people with them, whether it's their students or their peers, from a place of self-consciousness to a place of self-awareness and a place of self-judgment to a place of self-assessment. And that is that. So thank you very much for your time and for listening. Thank you so much, Leslie. You've, that's a wealth of information. And I, I also can imagine the amount of um, advice and, and, and insight that we have to add to that and to connect with the fact of assessing ourselves and evaluating ourselves as well. And um, especially how much that is in alignment with other people and how that makes maths so much more a collaborative mm -hmm. process as opposed to um, just a one person to, um, task. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that opens up uh, the door to any questions that people have. Yeah, I see someone has asked, please put back the last screen of the presentation. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, sure. I shall do that quickly. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let me just um, go back there. I open up the floor to anyone who has uh, something on the tip of their mind or um, as um, a biting question or an insight that you might have to to um, bring the conversation to a start. I'd, perhaps I'd like to throw something in that I was thinking about as the value of the the teacher or the or if even a, a friend amongst somebody who is battling to self assess. Um, because as you mentioned, it's, it's not always done accurately and we internalize things and we, um, um, and we get things wrong. We don't even, as you mentioned, we don't even realize that we are, um, that we're not achieving a certain goal. We're, we're un unaware. So the importance of having somebody and approaching the, the assessment process with you alongside you is is I think a vital key to have that right person as a parent or a teacher or a friend um, and to how to approach that. That's something that, that I drew out of that, um, that. One of the things that I drew, I drew out of that presentation and how valuable that is. So I'll leave it open to anyone else who wants to put some insight into that. Oh, and the previous slide, Greg, someone the has asked to go back one slide as well. There we go. If anybody does want to screenshot my slides, they're very welcome to do that. Um, if they'd like to use the presentation, um, I will also make it available um, right. afterwards. Okay. All right. But, yeah. Sorry. No, carry on. I, th okay. I think if I can just say from what you were saying, you know, one of the things that I had a, a short discussion about with Sophie about was also about when it comes to destigmatizing and breaking stereotypes, it's also acknowledging the progress of the student or the individual as they move from where they're at to a place that is better and acknowledging the effort that that takes because often a student that improves from 5% to 20% has invested far more than a student who improves from 78% to 85%. Um, and, and as you say, it takes the right kind of person to be able to give that kind of attention to all their, all the people that are under their tutelage, regarding, regardless of where they sit on the scale of mathematical ability um, themselves. Great. Well, let's hear from Anita. She's got her hand up and her camera on. So over to sure, you, Anita. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering um, about your comment and also, um, you know, these lovely ideas, Leslie, sharing with us. Thank you, Leslie. Um, 
about the potential that technology could perhaps fill in the gaps where somebody doesn't have a parent, teacher, or friend to help them along? Or are those people doomed? So, you know, sometimes uh, you could have a friend in a book in a way, uh, or is that too limited, uh, you know? And, and suppose somebody loses their teacher to a maternity leave or something at a crucial time. Um, you know, is, is the memory of having had interaction with someone who can support you good enough? It, you know, it feels like it's a, a constant, um, almost like a dance back and forth, your own development, um, constantly having to reflect on yourself. You don't just sort of achieve, ah, oh, I've now like understood myself fully. Um, I think we're constantly having to negotiate new challenges and reassess our reaction to them. But I'm wondering if there couldn't be some sort of um, almost, uh, yeah, some sort of technological friend, artificial intelligence in some way. So throwing that out there for discussion. Yeah, that just, I think, I think, also reaffirms how important it is that you have that support. And that's, and um, if that's mirrored in life, how you need that extra support. And um, as the whole world moves towards technology in various different ways, um, mathematics, it's on the forefront, and it's definitely a, a part of the conversation. Um, whether it's artificial intelligence or through online education. Um, yeah. Sorry, can I just add in there quickly before the next person talks, is that I think that that's why there is a lot of value in adding a human aspect to mathematics as a subject. You know, those small little things that teachers can do from the beginning of when they start to teach children, not just mathematics, but um, any subject to say what are these scaffolding skills that children are going to need and to actually build them into the curriculum. So if the ability to self-assess is necessary, you know, what exercises can be done in the classroom or via an app or through watching a program on TV um, that is educational, but that is going to incorporate these skills into the whole, you know, a holistic education process that is not just focused on the outcome of the result of can the child do a particular thing, but also what have they learned about themselves while they have learned to do this particular thing. Thank you. Let's hear from Carrie. It's Kari. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I, that last point on your slide about what non mathematic what what skills uh, should be oh, it was something about teaching um, teaching them what um, careers are available in mathematics. I, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's quite hard to come up with that in that I speak to the children and I say, you know, everything you use every day, your cell phone, it, all this interaction that you enjoy so much, you know, somebody's behind the scenes there and has mm -hmm. created that stuff as a result of their knowledge of, of mathematics and things like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's quite hard to know what skills people can go into with mathematics. I mean, um, I know people who've studied maths at university and then like, where do they, where do they go next? You know, we constantly get told that South Africa needs these STEM um, skills. And, you know, we have these bright children who go and do chemical engineering or whatever. And then when they come out the other side, it's actually quite uncertain. Like, where do you need me? What what do I do now? You know, where where is this need? And I, I find that quite difficult to to put forward to children and even to put forward to my own children. Um, but yeah, thank you for your sharing. Um, also, I guess most of us teachers will say that we struggle so much to get through content. And we're always trying to push forward and push forward and we never really have space to try and fill those gaps that are there. And that's why pupils fall off 
the wagon is because those gaps are there. And and they do tend to actually, <laughs> they they do like to blame a poor teacher or or whatever. And um, you know, even COVID now can be blamed for the problems that pupils experience in learning mathematics now. And uh, they often don't want to see where they are, you know, self assess see where I am, and, but they don't want to do something to fix it. They just are fairly passive about it. Anyway, I don't know if any of that is of value, but that's just my thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. I, I definitely back that up, Corey, because, um, you know, when things are going right, who do we give the credit to? And when things are going wrong, who do we put the blame to? And it's this human nature that comes into that into play and yeah, mm -hmm. um, assessing ourselves is important in moving ahead. I see Edward has got his hand up. Hello. Um, I just wanted to share some of my experience and stuff I got from um, tutoring high school and some primary school students. Um, and it ties in quite well with well, what Kerry was saying earlier with um, who do we blame when things go right and wrong, as well as Leslie's um, self-awareness or self-confidence um, because the problem I often see with high school students is some fundamental aspect of their mathematical understanding is hindered or missing and then that propagates through the rest of the understanding and gives them a bias against um, and that missing thing is often because it's taught in a way they don't quite understand but then when you re-explain it or rephrase it or put it at a different perspective in a way they do understand that understanding clicks in almost immediately and intuitively and then the entire section or whatever they're studying just doesn't have a problem anymore because like I remember one of my students he was sitting on 50 or 60 and then just re-explaining a few key concepts um, his marks jumped up 20 percent um, so in South African education I notice quite a lot that a key concept is often missing or brushed over and then people fall behind and things fall apart later on. That's, that's what I want to contribute. Thank you, Edward. I think a lot of us can connect with that and, and have aha moments and thinking of certain students and, and times for ourselves when that's happened for us. Sure. Yeah, okay. I just jump in here quickly. I just want to respond to to two things. Or oh, actually, well, first, first to Corey's question or slash comment about um, you know these kids go out there and they you know there's this big drive to study mathematics, study STEM subjects, etc., etc., et and then we sort of say, and and where are these things? I think as a as someone who teaches uh, in higher education physics specifically i try i i, I think we 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 are ourselves to blame for this but which is why this whole conversation about the universal value of mathematics is so important i almost want to ex I, I almost want to 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 venture and say the the universal value of of the sciences uh, I, I will explain what i mean by that it's it's a you know, I have lots of friends who studied at university with me, did engineering, did mathematics, did physics, did all sorts of things. And some of them never ended up doing anything related to. They ended up ended up going into spaces that are, you know, almost orthogonal to what, what you where you would have expected them to go. But what they do carry with them is the ability to think logically, the ability to sort of unpack a problem to sort of take a thing apart and to say what are the fundamentals here what are the really core issues that 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 you know of of this problem or the situation or whatever and then try and put it back together again with a solution or whatever i think i i suspect that sometimes we get a bit too hung up on only the content yes the content is important i when i teach people physics they need to know physics but more than just teaching them physics i need to teach them how to think about the world in terms of physics how to think and and with that process there comes a, a whole bunch of that's not just physics that is that is that is in a sense tapping into the universal value of doing physics now the same what we're talking about here is mathematics you know 
um, constructing a proof or whatever that is 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 you know it's 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 not an exercise in constructing only a proof it's an exercise in con in using your logic so so i, I just wanted to 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 just latch onto that uh, 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 kari um um you know it's 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 that it's that notion of of you actually enabling people to think you're enabling people to think more than just getting the content okay that's well stop for now i might come back to some other points later but thank you Thank you, Deandra. I think we have some uh, um, comments in the in the chat regard, regarding your insight there. A um, lot of things that we can connect with. Can I perhaps at this stage try to play devil's advocate and say the other side of the argument uh, and um, say uh, perhaps where you would have some people saying I was terrible at maths and I never understood it and it was a big battle for me the whole way through high school but look at me today there's someone I work with at, at um, a colleague of mine and she is the most proficient um, person who's who thinks logically is very sharp and um, has has uh, yeah has, has a tremendous amount of skills at what she does but she tells me, oh, I survived another day without mathematics. And obviously we laugh about it, but we know, you know, she knows how to, um, she uses maths in everyday life, but there's that side where she's a self-confessed person who says I was not good and I am not good at maths, and yet she's so good at um, what she does and she carries on very skillfully um, on a regular basis. So I'll leave that up there in the air. And I will pass over to Maria, who's got her hand up. Let's hear from you, Maria. Oh, thank you very much. I, I would like to comment uh, one slide of, uh, of uh, Leslie, because there was a slide about uh, how students can see the, when they see it in reality. And actually, I'm a teacher uh, in the university of the first year of technical school, engineering, and also economical school. And what I can tell is just like uh, these young students really cannot see the value of mathematics. Like they come from high school, they come from basic schools, and sometimes they are putting very often questions like why we study ma mathematics, why we have matrices, why we have functions, derivations, and all this. Even they are on technical studies and they will be engineers, they are not able to see this. So from my point, I'm just recalling and recalling and recalling and trying to motivate them like you can see it later in some specific uh, physics or technical sciences and everything like that. But what what is really missing is that they, they, they cannot see motivation to study mathematics. They, they feel it like a suffering. So, so what we can do just is to make uh, them motivate and to to repeat them why they need all this and another thing is like uh, uh, implication in reality like for example in slovakia we have a system that when you get uh, employer like a young person uh, from your salary you pay taxes you pay social insurance and health insurance and everything is counted in percentage so they take you maybe like 33 percent of your salary for all this and many, many people, yeah, especially young people who have no experience with this, they are not able to see this. They see that they will, they will get just the, like brutal salary. And then they are very surprised when on the account comes uh, different money, less money. And many of them, they are not even able to count this 33 percent, how much it is and where it goes and like this. So I think it is really, important this uh, mathematical thinking for everyday normal life or the for non-mathematician people because they meet it in everyday life even if you go to a restaurant and you pay and you give some more money to a waiter some people even are not able to count how much they need to expect to get back and like that 
Even in the past, I was uh, teaching at the Faculty of Architecture and they had mathematics in the first year. And I got many often questions as why we need this. And then we started to make it more applicable and we did it with applications like, look, this uh, is an uh, architecture and he used mathematics for creating this, he used these curves for creating uh, bridges and like this. So when they see more application, maybe they can realize better how they can feel with this. And then they feel uh, uh, even better with themselves, like what I study has really sense. And the third observation, which is really very new in my case, because you know, I live in Slovakia and we are in the border with the Ukraine and there is a war and therefore we have a lot of students from Ukraine because they run away. And I can see the difference between Slovak and Ukraine students a lot because, for example, in Slovakia, the Slovak system education allows students in basic and in higher in uh, college, in the college uh, school to use uh, calculation, calculators, you know, like uh, they can use it like a machine. But then they come to university and we are not allowing that. And some of them, they really fail in basic operation like plus, minus, minus, minus in, and uh, counting or multiplication of big numbers because suddenly we took them softwares, we took them calculators, we took them, we take them uh, cell phones and they need just to think and they forget or even basic things. So, and in Ukraine, it is not like that. They cannot use it. So the skills is better in this. And what I can tell is just like, we just cannot uh, wake up, uh, make, wake up and continue supporting students like even now if you're not so good it's okay you still can be better and better step by step drop by drop and this is the point what i really see in this and i think uh, lastly presentation has uh, very big value even for me thank you so much <laughs> that was very uh, very insightful. I mean, to hear the perspective of students and um, from the other side, uh, from actually anywhere in the world, have the same um, the same experience that, that sometimes we see of students not using calculators. And um, you've you've actually answered my question about somebody thinking, how do I use? I I I can get through life perfectly fine without maths, but if you stop and you look, you find that you do use maths regularly in the restaurants looking at architectures um, and um, throughout various aspects that you don't even realize and so perhaps that's why self-assessment um, is so important as well you get to realize that you do actually have those skills um, right I, 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 so, uh, sorry can i can just throw in here very quickly but i i i think I think that's why it's so important that these things need to be said explicitly. Um, you know, it shouldn't be left to chance. It shouldn't be left to, oh, the, the people will discover it somewhere. You know, that's why I think it needs to be explicitly stated. You know, there is more to all of this. You know, Sean, your, your, your colleague, you know, it's like, I almost want to say, my, my, as you were saying, I was thinking, now how do we how do we how do we help someone like that to sort of to sort of stop and and in a sense assess okay where where am i actually at when it comes to my 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 ability with mathematics or or my my and that's a and and as i mean the, the whole point of the series is it's not just about it's it's about not just related to mathematics but actually you know uh the, the broader picture you know life the universe and everything else um, in a sense, um, but but you know, it's sort of so. My question is, in, in, in a sense, and I don't have the answer. How, how does one stop that person? You know, as an adult, successful individual in their everyday, you know, professional life, but they still sit with this. And how do you sort of help that person to say, okay, now, how do I help you assess where you are? You, you, you hear what I'm what I'm saying? Anyway, that's just a uh, very vague 
law question out there. Anyway, sorry, someone else had their hand up. No, thank you for that. Um, I know what to say. I, I'm now more equipped as to how to respond to this, this colleague of mine as well. Gretel, to you. Hi, everyone. Just to say thank you, Leslie, for a wonderful presentation. I am I, I'm so in support of um, this extra layer that teachers and, and any um, kind of mental role person, but particularly teachers, that they can bring to their learners. Um, and I guess I'm curious to know, is this being brought into the teacher training process? Because a teacher can only really bring this layer if they themselves are on a self-awareness journey. Um, so I don't know if anyone has the answer to that, but I think that um, it's so crucial and critical for this to be brought into the classroom. Um, I'm just wondering on the how. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sort of quickly respond. I'm, I'm, I'm probably talking out of turn now. Yeah, I, 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 I had an interesting discussion, and, and, and I see, unfortunately, you can't be in part of the discussion today with, with Neil Eddy of the Ubuntu Maths Institute. Uh, in, in the week. And um, just to, to answer, sort of just respond briefly to, to you, you, Gretel. Um, it's, it's not, for, I, I, I fully agree with you. You know, if, 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 if teachers are meant to sort of start, um, you know, operating in this space where they, where, where this extra layer is added, they need to be uh, taught. But what Neil does with, with some teachers uh, at schools is, is he, 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 he sort of, um, in a sense, places the teacher to be in this in the position of being a learner again, you know, with all sorts of puzzles, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, games, etc., where, where the teachers have to figure out. I'm, I'm I'm skipping a bit of context here now, but anyway. And I thought I said to him that's such a valuable thing because all of a sudden this, the, the the teacher is being placed in the same situation as his learner, so the teacher has to sort of stop and assess. Oops, what 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 what, what do I know? You know, do, 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 do I have, you know, in essence, what do I know? How do I think about myself? How do I stop? How do I go? How do I approach this unknown problem? You know, this, this difficult problem. And uh, I think it's also, I, I think it is so necessary and it's such a, it, it must be, I don't know, incorporated in, in that sphere of, of training because, you know, we forget you know, I, I I teach first year students, and I forget what I struggled with. Sometimes I forget that you know it was difficult to learn certain things too. Um, and in a sense, you know that aspect of, of of when it comes to teaching the familiar stuff, you don't do that. You you don't in a sense have to do that self assessment anymore. So so you need to be in a sense constantly reminded that you know your students are sitting in the space where. Oops, you know, it's not as familiar for them, and 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 they need to do this self-assessment, self-awareness, self, <laughs> and it's a whole lot of self in there for them, mostly of the wrong kind. Um, but but yeah, I I I just want to agree with with that. It's so 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 necessary, um, and yeah, we need to start doing it sooner rather than later. Anyway, I'm, I'll stop there. That, I'm very much in agreement with you, Leandro. It's it's great when we put high or mighty educators in the in the learner's seat to also put us out of our comfort zone of, of knowing how we learn and, and grapple with, with um, the process. Leslie, you've had your hand up. Unmute myself. Hi, yes. Okay, so um, I have two comments actually. So the first one is from what Sorry, based on what Gretel has said, and I think that that some of the training that I did to be able to assess children at risk of learning failure um, was part of the process was was about self reflection as the educator or the assessor or the, you know, the practitioner is that constant process of reflection and that is something that all teachers should actually be incorporating into their classroom practices and when they're out of the classroom is reflecting on how was my day? How are my students? Um, am I being the person that they need me to be in the space? 
Um, but I think the important part about the conversations that we're having now, um, and it was what Sophie and I have been discussing right from a, a long time ago, is to take discussions like this and to find those things that need to be made explicit and finding ways that they can um, easily be incorporated, whether it is into the official curriculum or to teachers by means of training programs or presentations so that they can take the information um, and have a, a toolkit, uh, you know, that they can use to actually incorporate these processes into the daily learning experience. Um, so that was my one comment. And then the other one was um, from Corey talking about, you know, students not being able to find relevance to mathematics. And it's it's very interesting because in my whole study, I had, um, when I was doing my study, I had a lot of thoughts about what I was going to find as to why students do not persevere with maths. And I honestly thought it would be because it was difficult or because they felt discriminated against because of their gender or because they didn't fit a stereotype or whatever. But my primary finding in my study was actually that people give up on maths because they don't know what they can do with it. And they don't know what other relevance that particular course has for their futures. So a lot of students will get an undergraduate degree in mathematics and then go on to do an adjacent um, thing in finance or engineering or science um, and leave the maths behind. I don't, well, maybe not behind, but on the side because they actually don't know. There's nobody that stands up and says, I am I do this job and I have a maths degree and maybe I don't make calculations and do proofs all day, but these are the skills that I learned while I was studying the subject and this is how I apply them in my life today. Well, wow, there's amazing um, bits of advice we could actually even take to our classrooms, whether it's on a small scale or um, whether we can put it together and get our ideas and uh, as a Wasaku team, put in an article and um, to watch out for the space as we move ahead. As we conclude this hour, it's been fascinating. And I think we've got some, some encouraging, enriching ideas that we can uh, move ahead in. And uh, if even, even on our practical basis, going into our classrooms and into our lecture theatres, chatting with our colleagues um, on, on a different scale. And I also, on that point, I have an article which I'm posting now in the chat, which is a very similar article to well, it, it, it touches some connections with what we've made today, but it asks a question in a different perspective. How is our inability to self-assess, uh, how that can derail the academic system? And that is a, the academic success. And that is an article written by Leslie Scott for our magazine in a previous volume. So you're welcome to have a look at that, copy it and, and look through it over the weekend. Uh, Leslie, thank you for your insight and for your presentation to get us going. Lots of food for thought. Thank you to everybody who've contributed here. Um, there is the Google link, the Google form, which was posted at the top of the chat from Sophie. And I will post it again right now. Please, could you complete that as well? And um, thanks to everybody. Have a lovely weekend and um, keep in touch.